our respective speaker, Mr. Rajiv Mittal and Mr. Sukumar Bedi. Mr. Rajiv Mittal, industry leader from IBM India Private Limited, and Mr. Sukumar Bedi, industry architect from IBM India Private Limited. Everyone, give it applause and please welcome them on stage. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I, I understand this is the last uh, presentation of the day, and all of you must be looking forward to uh, head back. Uh, so we'll make it quick. Uh, so what we will try to do is, uh, whatever uh, has been discussed till now, right, all the technologies, all the business problems we have mm -hmm. in the implementation, uh, what IBM team has done is, like, uh, working with global clients, uh, we have put a framework to, overall, uh, to, to, to doing all these things using the exponential technologies, which is obviously cloud, 5G, edge computing, AI and analytics. So, so with the combination of these exponential technologies, what we have done is put a framework uh, to solve business problems. So, okay, so overall IBM has been working globally with, uh, with around uh, 60 plus clients in AMI. Uh, we have been, uh, the, the, the journey in US started uh, way in 1990 with AMI 1.0, and 65% of the utilities in US are already on AMI. Uh, obviously the drivers were lower price, better control of uh, uh, energy usage, uh, so that, that is how it started. Uh, with, the, with the customer and the regulatory uh, control, the initial implementation were mostly focusing on uh, the meter to cash capability, right, which is uh, your uh, remote reading and billing, uh, interval tracking, uh, and offline reads. And as technology and evolution evolved, uh, the use, use cases were, uh, as we get more sensors and automation in the system, uh, we got into uh, remote uh, disconnect and, and connect, right? So, so that is how it is. Overall, IBM, as I said, right, we have created a lot of reusable assets on AMI, how we help our clients to globally implement AMI implementations. We have uh, PhDs, doctors, SMEs, industry SMEs who are dedicated to this kind of effort. We have our partnerships with, with, with a lot of players on head end and, and other, other systems who, uh, who we work with. Uh, so let me move, uh, yeah. So, 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 so smart meter analytics is, is is touch across the value chain, right? It is not limited to just getting a read and, and billing the customer. It, 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 it touches the entire utility value chain, right? That is what we are trying to say here. It, it touches condition-based monitoring, like how you manage the assets, distribution load and forecasting, so you can use it for that, and then the overall smart meter analytics. Okay. Okay. So, So this is a journey, as I, I was just saying, right, that, that in, 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 in North America, US, or developed countries, uh, the implementation started in 1990s, and they are already at the end of life uh, with their AMI 1.0, and, and with the technology evolution, they moved into 1.5 uh, with, with smart meter operations, meter event, uh, uh, managing those events uh, on a remote basis. But now we are at inflection point, right, with AMI 2.0. And with the exponential technologies in cloud, uh, 5G, edge computing, AI analytics, uh, we, we are, uh, that is where the investment is now. But it has to be justified uh, with, 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 the, with the value it will provide. Uh, and now there are a lot of environmental concerns as well, right? So it has to address the sustainability goals of the organization as well, right? So, so that is where the 2.0 is. So what we have done is uh, we have we have created a framework as I was just telling that how we can infuse or com or combine all these uh, exponential technologies and 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 put a framework where we can help the utilities. So with that, I will hand over to Sukumar. So um, good good <laughs> good evening, everyone. It's uh, so this basically uh, like Rajiv is saying, it's a journey, right? So you got to walk before you can run, and uh, are, it has four steps that you know any AI program has, right? So you, and I'll walk through all of them. It's about collect, organize, analyze, and infuse. So what does collect mean? Collect is uh, we talked about it earlier today about you know how we collect data from various meter, uh, AMI meter, um, smart meters. So data from these meters. We also talked about challenges earlier today about how there's high volume. There's, um, lack, there might be cha challenges related to the veracity of data. So volume, variety of data, variety we talked about with different examples today about you know, how uh, we have different head end, different um, 
head end systems, different MDMs. So we talked about velocity. We talked with real time, that was a requirement from someone, and the veracity, of course, around um, the quality of data. So this is an example from a utility in Europe. Uh, a distribution utility, and this is an example that we, you know, touched upon many times today, but never reached. Really, uh, came to, uh, you know, here's something we did. We talked about companies who feel very strong in asset management, in customer care and billing, in spot metering, but they are reluctant to talk to take on the challenges of communication, of you know, of learning how to connect with 5G uh, or you know other LTEs, edge. Um, communication channels. So this was a utility that was not very confident of, you know, um, of, of IoT, of, you know, they thought it was risky. They didn't uh, want to uh, manage large number of devices. So for them, we designed a solution which we called data as a service, where, where we took care of everything from the meter, of course, with our partners, and provided just the data to these uh, tenant, to these companies as a service from the smart meter. So they did not have to worry about the network, the head-end systems, and our success with them resulted in them wanting more, uh, I mean, more distribution companies wanting to get onto our platform. And now we also are extending this from electricity to water services. The next one is, is you know, another uh, thing we talked a lot about today about you know, connecting any device to any device. This is something that we <laughs> developed, and now this has um, extended onto the a, to the cloud of available as well. So this is uh, Beam, and Beam is basically you know with smart meters. We, we were just discussing about business models for smart meters, and here you know there is a new model that you know the smart meter data is wanted by other consumers, or as someone earlier today referred to as prosumers. So you know, people who are wanting to monetize your smart meter data. So in this case, Beam is able to connect any meter. So we, there are about 150 types of devices supported there. Any service, that's electricity, gas, water, any technology, and um, also any um, uh, kind of cloud platform. So um, there we, we connect and we are able to provide the data down the line to our consumers. So this is a very popular so solution also in, in Europe that we are uh, selling out on the AWS marketplace now. The second thing we talked about earlier today, there were two things actually we talked about. One was, uh, there was about you know data management. It was uh, a point brought up in the earlier panel today. And there was one more point about you know the SIM data model. Now, data management is, uh, is how you organize your data. So this basically there is a challenge that we're facing around business language, you know, the enterprise language, especially with, with different head-end systems. How do you integrate all these into your current enterprise vocabulary? How do you ensure that, you know, you have, it's future proof and your data scientists can do analytics of it. So in that context, it's about how you organize your data. And there are many aspects. We don't have enough time today to talk through this, but yeah. The major piece is how do you catalog your data? How do you manage your data? Um, I think Dr. Sriram earlier today talked about uh, SIM. So this is uh, our solution. It's called IBM Knowledge Accelerator for Energy and Utilities. We, we have, it's a SIM compliant enterprise data vocabulary. We're using it multiple clients to sort of, uh, especially you know, to meet various regulatory requirements. And, and now this is the part that we talked a lot about today called Analyze. What do you, how do you, you know, smart meter analytics? A lot of the discussion today was all about smart meter analytics, but you've got to remember that you have to do the collect and analyze and organize before you can analyze. So these are some of the services. We talked a lot about customer services. So around billing, we talked about uh, time-based pricing. We talked about um, revenue uh, protection and revenue enhancement. So um, a lot of these have already been discussed. I'll talk through a few of these use cases Again, um, not we're at end of day, and I don't want to bore the remaining participants here. But um, so yeah, so this is um, in. We've already talked about some of these, you know, use cases we've done for our clients: time of use, tariff analysis, um, remote turn off, turn on. I'll talk through. Um, we talked about load disaggregation and disaggregation in the last panel as well. 
So uh, these are the customer service related use cases. Again, I won't go through, but I'll uh, talk about a couple of these in the next slide, which is around fault detection, which is with broken neutrals. So often, you know, um, we talked about uh, we talked about various fault identification, right, and energy theft. But this is a very, uh, we, I think one of the panelists also talked about fire. In this use case, basically it's about detecting a broken neutral in your electric network where you use your customer profile on the network or his um, AMI data to actually understand his loads. And then if there is a broken neutral, it'll result in a variable load and therefore you can, which can be detected and um, you can actually identify a, a, a fire or, um, you know, a, uh, electric uh, sh shock maybe on on his premise before it happens this was so that was on uh, low um, voltage networks and this is the same thing on high voltage where you use the the power of uh, of your customer profiles or the EMI meter profile data profiles and identify a broken wire or a faulty cable again something um, and Amongst many things we talked about, we sort of didn't touch upon, we touched upon EV, but how do you manage loads on EVs? And uh, there was a talk, discussion today about how do you start? So one of the things was to, you know, AMI in presence of, uh, in the presence of, you know, high theft. But another uh, use case which we're piloting in Europe is in areas of high EV penetration. So especially, you know, in the Nordics, where you look at, you know, those patches of green, of, sorry, of the patches of yellow, and you identify what time of use pricing can be best used for load disaggregation in high EV penetration areas. Um, this is another great use case around monetization. This was one use case that didn't get touched upon uh, today in terms of uh, monetization. Basically, smart meter data is, is enormous. And um, for example, if, if you're using your air conditioning too much, how, how about a local ice cream parlor wants to know if you're using your air conditioning and wants to give you, based off your smart meter data, and wants to send you extra ice creams over the summer. So there are a lot of monetization use cases that are de being developed all across Europe. Um, one of it was, um, we're doing a program in, in um, called the Flex program, where we're using you know the smart meter to identify flexibility uh, in the network, so again, which can be there for used either for electric vehicles or, or for um, other use cases. And the last step on the ladder is when you start getting smarter, you, it doesn't only work on those use cases, you start impacting other parts of your organization, so your sales, marketing, revenue, energy trading, and other parts of your organization. So that's how you, um, different pieces that you do start impacting, and I would have talked through it, but again, um, I think the clock says 50 seconds. <laughs> so lastly, uh, how do you start? And Rajiv, you want to take this? I, like one use case was that, okay, I think this was discussed in the previous panel discussion as well. Identify an area where you see more theft, right? And, 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 and deploy smart meters uh, with, with the technologies there. And, and then follow it up with a revenue assurance analytics model, right? Using these technologies. And then you get the return immediately, right? That's one use case. The other use case is now more and more customers across the world, right? They are they are uh, they are going for electric vehicles to identify an area where where uh, where people are uh, more uh, prone towards charging their uh, vehicles at home. So that is where you can deploy smart meters. Uh, you can then follow it up with load profile analytics, and and then you can uh, help utilities with with load consumption patterns, and then they can design. A lot of specific programs for those kind of customers and, 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 for, and, and give them incentives, right? And load fluctuation, those kind of analysis you can do. So these are two use cases which we have done for our clients and, and which give you a kickstart for smart meter implementation. You don't have to do end-to-end, -end, right? So that's, uh, those are the two things. Uh, the overall business drivers for implementing, especially AMI 2.0, is obviously government programs, which we have been discussing since I think since yesterday that you get you need to get government funding to implement these kind of programs. Other ones is the examples we have taken, and the last one can be and which is more applicable in 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 uh, world outside India, where where you have to submit a rate case. If you submit a rate case and if you can load that up with your asset cost, uh, that can justify your AMI implementation. Right. So so these are three things, three four things you can do for AMI implementation. I think that's it.
That's right. With that, I can uh, conclude, right, uh, with, with uh, when you have AMI powered by edge computing uh, over, over analytics and you have a scalable IoT uh, system on cloud, uh, you can get real-time uh, real feed which utilities can, uh, can drive a lot of value from. Uh, that is the whole imperative. Thank you.